challenges and the issues that we want to bring to the forefront, curated the workshops, sessions, and present them um, as proposals. And we were able to have speakers from the different um, stakeholder groups present so that we can deliver on issues and present recommendations. So the future of the IGF I see is one that is more engaging for young people, um, having at the forefront with our issues, and also um, moving on to be able to follow through to see whether there's been any action or to by, by way of metric checking to see what has improved around it. Now, how can we measure something if we don't have, say, a, a metric to do so? I'm thinking that one of the things that would help us in the future of the IGF is how we are able to map the issues that are discussed to what is in the data compacts that we know or probably just the common agenda to see that there's, there are issues that are discussed and then these are maybe um, initiatives that are implemented some of these recommendations. So when we look at what the recommendations are and what institutions or what um, projects are using them, we'll be able to say that, okay, there's a recommendation and we can see that it's been um, implemented in a certain project. Now, the future of the IGF will also be very heavily dependent on funding for us young people. Like most of the coordinators have mentioned, it is essentially support in such a way that we have the participation sustained. So we, we, we come to the IGF, but it doesn't have to stop here. Beyond that, what is happening? Are we able to pull resources together or have an idea bank to continue the conversation or even to implement some of the things we have, we have in mind? And that will be dependent on what support looks like for us when it comes to funding or for just expertise that exists and essentially to, um, for capacity building. So I'm thinking the future of the IGF would probably, uh, would pretty much look like these. Um, support all around and young people pretty much um, involved actively. Thank you very much. Uh, there are so many things I want to say, but I have five minutes, so I will try to wrap up and just only a few of them. Uh, so first of all, a few times here, the funding was mentioned. Uh, funding opportunities is something really essential uh, because so many people, so many talented people People don't have resources, don't have access, and uh, that's something that needs to be tackled. So, just uh, not very, uh, not telling much more on the topic, but it is something that other speakers has also mentioned, and I think it is so, so, so important. And the second thing, I think it is more general con uh, comment, but that's uh, what is really essential that young people shouldn't be treated like some special category of people, however it sounds. It's because, you know, on the casual basis uh, in our advocacy work, in our careers, uh, at different conferences, in academic lives, young people, even if they are really, really talented, they have a lot of achievements, they are treated like some special category of people. And you know, it is something that is actually a real glass sailing because sometimes even applying for a job, uh, even if you have finished three faculties, you had written tons of articles, but you don't have 10 years of experience. So you are not, uh, you are not accepted. And uh, being treated as too young, so too inexperienced is, a very stiff barrier and I think it is something we really need to talk about and also that we need uh, the senior experts, maybe not very senior, but older than 35, older than 30, so the United Nations age barrier for being young, we need them also to advocate for us because, you know, if somebody doesn't listen to young people, he wouldn't listen to that they want to be patronized for being young. But there are a lot of people who are also supporters of their younger colleagues who listen to them. And I think there's a need that we talk with them and tell them that we need their help because a lot of their colleagues don't treat us as they are equal partners in the dialogue. So what I think we really need to um, say out loud is that we don't want this kind of labeling. Of course, uh, I think it is something also to be recognized if somebody is very young and has already uh, achieved a lot of things. And in this way, it is good if we prize him for being, for achieving so much in uh, such an early age, but at the same time, it can be patronizing. So I think it would be a good thing to see such statistics. I'm
not sure if there are such, for example, how many young people under 35 uh, were engaged as panelists, as moderators, as organizers, rapporteurs in different sessions, because we know about our youth-led sessions, but how about the rest of them? How many other uh, organizers who had, uh, had their sessions here engage young people into their sessions? And at the same time, mm, I think it would be the good thing if young people were engaged more, but it doesn't mean being treated as a special category is the same like, is the same like women in the workplaces. Like if there are 90% of men in the particular workplace, it is good to hire more women, but it doesn't mean that women are some kind of special category of people. So I just think it should be the same with the youth ones. Yeah, and I think that that was uh, all my time. So I'm uh, passing the floor to the next speaker. Yes, please, Shena. Go on. Thank you so much. Uh, I will keep it short. And I I'm not going to repeat what Amelia and Lily mentioned, because those are very important. Um, instead, I'll focus more on um, on how we can take uh, this platform, um, you know, as, as a space for connections and collaborations, because I am such an advocate for capacity building and continuous or consistent participation from youth also. Um, most very often we participate in IGF and feel very like reluctant and feel like not confident enough to participate sometime when it's like your first or second time joining it. But I would say, you know, to make our future bright together, we need to get involved. And I think one one step after today's meeting here, when it concludes, I think one thing you could do is to join and become a member of Youth Coalition. Um, I think there's a lot of things we can take advantage of this platform that we're in right now um, to do more work together because we have so many uh, amazing people here um, we we are we are the future of our um, you know for our next generation, so I think uh, there is a lot more work we can done uh, we we can get it done together uh, to make more collaborations and uh, other than like workshop or being on a panel uh, right now um, after joining all this conference for like five years, I tell myself not to join as a speaker too much because I have to do more tangible work with people who don't really speak or show their faces in the front. We have lots of people contributing to making bi-weekly newsletter happenings, like Daphne been contributing so much and so many other people trying to do reports, blog posts or research to make topics accessible. But um, many of us don't really get to see it because they simply because not not all of them are comfort comfortable uh, in speaking in front of everyone, but it doesn't mean that you are not doing that kind of work. And I think, uh, you know, with this kind of space, we could do more than that because uh, some, sometimes that as a youth, I feel like we nearly need to earn respect or recognition from other stakeholder. And I believe with all this work and collaborations and leveraging a partnership with youth and other stakeholders that will help us to um, that will help us to learn from the process as well as making our output accessible to people because all those material will eventually uh, go in somewhere and people can get those knowledge that you internalize and those are very important uh, um, output and contributions from uh, for our youth community so i believe that's something I really would like to advocate. And then earlier when Amelia was mentioning like, uh, how many youth speakers are contributing? What's, what does it look like? And I think these are all very interesting and sometimes like interesting area we can, we can study on um, as a youth. Because, but, but of course I understand sometimes very difficult to contribute because we have so many other commitments too, or, simply because we don't work full time in this industry, it's hard for us to um, spend extra time on it. But then I, I think with YCIG, uh, I hope next year we get to see um, the new steering committee to do some other work that's even more action oriented um, um, to, to see how we can 
contribute to continuous engagement um, and what we can do with all the members in the Youth Coalition. Uh, of course, I know this year we spent so much time in organizing all this webinar, which is really helpful in helping youth to get ready for IGF. But I think we can do, do more than that because there's too many work to be done for youth engagement. And I think that's like one step uh, forward that I would like to see us doing it. Thank you. Thanks, Jenna. Going to Veronica. So I, I will endorse everything that uh, the other speakers have actually pointed out. Uh, and I would like I will add something just to pinpoint one thing, one something that for me is very important and it's about collaborations and partnership. You know, this year, uh, the YCIG and the Youth Standing Group have achieved so much. Um, we were able to do something that in the past, has never been done before. Uh, it's not just the number of the panel that we were able to bring to the IGF, but the quality of the speakers and also something that is very important that they actually uh, indirectly, Emil also mentioned, uh, the fact that uh, we, the young, young people want to be treated um, like the other stakeholders and not some particular category. This year, many of our session brings to the same table young, spe young speakers who are experts in, in some topics and senior experts. And we are bringing to the same ta table on the equal footing. And this time we were able to bring young people in the mainstream, um, you know, discussion. And this is what we uh, have been able to achieve this year, while in the past, all the youth session were uh, with youth, from youth to youth. So this year uh, we were able to break the youth bubble, try to elevate our contribution to a higher level. The second thing that I wanted to stress, I actually mentioned it before, is um, the difficulty of some people coming from certain geographical area who don't have English as a driving language, as a working language. I know that many of you may have like English as the native or um, bilingual uh, language, but many of us don't have, uh, don't have English as a working language. And this is very important that the same opportunities that we have are given to people that don't speak English and they and young people and newcomers has to be they have to have the possibility to be trained and to understand what the internet governance is, how they con can contribute, even if not as a speaker, but you know, in a pol on a policy level, you know, acting with and working with their national language. And that is also an element of inclusivity because you know, discussion in English is not inclusive at all because that implies that you have learned English in like in some part of your of your life that you have you have had some kind of uh, education. So this is uh, what I like to to say, and I wrap up here. You know, leaving the floor to the moderator. Thank you very much so much. Before going to, to our interactive part of the session, I would like to say some words because I, I echo what, what Vero said. Uh, and I think that uh, we, we have seen an evolution of the youth initiatives around the world. Uh, right now, there are more than 30 national and regional youth initiatives. There is a, an RI toolkit that is available for all of you to create your own youth group if, if there is not in your country. And uh, you can be in touch with the Youth Coalition and the Youth SG also uh, to have some help to, to do that. Well, what I see is that I see that there is a necessity of more funding, as Lily said at the beginning, and Emilia also mentioned it, 
But there is also a, a, another opportunity that is the resource persons, right? Because if you're if someone is organizing, for example, Emilia is organizing the Youth IGF Poland, and she would like to have a speaker uh, so for some of the topics, they could engage uh, and cooperate with the other Youth IGF initiative for for a topic, and that helps a lot. It's, uh, I mean, it's a matter of resources uh, for free that we can have, and also about the languages, right? Because uh, there are se several countries around the world that speak the same language, so that, that could be a possibility to to do that. that what Vero said about uh, maintaining the local language for is more inclusive, right? So now going to the uh, to the poll part, uh, Mauricia will also hopefully uh, sh uh, share in the share in the chat the, the link to join, and I will share the screen here for all of you. Just a second. Here. I think the trans, ah, I need to put. So you will see, yes, the transcript is in the top, but uh, we will share the code and also it's in the chat. Mauricia will share. Uh, the code is 11. 8623. You need to enter. You can get from your mobile phone, go to menti.com and you can put the number there. Uh, uh, Mauricia, can you can you say the, the number for, for all the audience? Because I, I don't see it properly. You were actually very correct, Nicholas. The number is 118623. So it's mentimeter.com and so menti.com and you would put in the code 118623. So the idea is this part to be more interactive, so the panelists could be talking uh, at the moment that the messages are appearing in the screen. So if you like to mention some of the things that are appearing, or if you yeah. have some ideas. Or yes. we can actually, like we planned, have the microphone go around. I mean, you already s you, you'll be putting it here, but if you wanted to say something of what you envision the future of the IGF to be, you can take the floor and I can give you the microphone. Okay, there's someone here and here. And you too. Okay. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Jose Fisa Hadidban. Uh, I coordinate the chat with IGF. Uh, we just had our uh, seventh annual meeting this uh, past two uh, weeks, and we have highlighted some important uh, issues uh, from uh, the perspective of uh, the participant. So we had uh, internet shutdown issues because uh, nowadays, uh, it is quite difficult for uh, us to get to connect uh, to internet and uh, follow, for instance, uh, online meetings or online uh, courses. Uh, we have also uh, accessibility issue because uh, when you leave just the cities and you are in the rural areas, there is no connectivity. So how can we help these uh, young people living in the community uh, in the rural area to uh, get the connect to internet. Uh, we have also the cyber security, uh, I mean, uh, issue like cyber crimes happen uh, when this uh, rural community young people try to get to connect to internet and they don't understand what is on internet. So how can we create some content using the local digital literacy to help them uh, to understand? Because in my Mother lung, I cannot easily understand, uh, explain to someone how, uh, what, or what is, I mean, cyber security, for instance, uh, is. Uh, last, can we like uh, work together to find some uh, funding uh, support for these uh, youth initiative, like to organize properly their annual meetings and uh, how we can also organize some monthly activity to talk about the local uh, issues during that period. And last, how can we uh, connect youth initiative with the IGF local chapters? Because according to my experience, there is, I mean, a gap between youth initiative and the local IGF chapters. So how can we get to connect with them and 
uh, benefit from their expertise. Thank you very much. To add that the points are spot on, we'll be listening and um, trying to respond. Keep it brief so we don't miss out the information. Thank you. Um, hello, everyone. Um, hello everyone, I'm Mariam from Tunisia, uh, I'm a digital rights activist and I would like to congratulate you for the great work you're doing. Um, my suggestion for the next IGF is, uh, well, if this is my first IGF, what I noticed is that there is a huge number of themes, but during the discussion, the amount of time allowed to the discussion or panels is really short. So the speakers and uh, the people attending do not have enough time to get their point across sometimes. And the people attending do not have the chance also to participate because of the limited time. So if we can have, I understand that there is a need to have different themes for everyone to have something that they care about to attend. But if we can have like less themes and or more time for each session for people to be able to um, interact with each other, that would be great. Thank you. Hi, good morning, everyone. João Pedro speaking from Portugal. Um, I'll go direct to the question just to keep it brief. So I think that for youth IG engagement, um, I mean, this is the a perfect example of how it's been working throughout the, the time I've been involved. And I'm super happy to say that in terms of engagement and, and as Lily said also, in terms of uh, us being included in the process, I think we are all uh, to cheer for because we are doing uh, and we are having a great impact. But looking forward, I think that it would be interesting also to explore other youth initiatives that are outside of the IG bubble. Um, I've worked in the past with some uh, yearly th thematics for some youth initiatives at European level. And I think this is the, um, this might be one of the spots where we want to expand the youth uh, participation at IG level. Because if we make sure that the topic reaches out youth initiatives that are not IG related, but at the same time we provide them with the knowledge and the space for discussion, we might be generating more input and more relevant opinions for the discussions when we get back to the process at the IG level. So, yeah, um, I'll be happy also to um, talk a little bit with people that are actually having an impact at local level for these uh, youth institutions because um, I think this is a great step for moving forward. Thank you. Is it? Yeah, we have a very limited time and you all are raising so many important points that would be a really bad thing to leave them without answer. So I would just like to tell you about uh, our other session that's happening today at 3, 5 uh, p.m. Uh, it is called uh, Global Youth Engagement or Opportunities uh, and Successes. And I think we will have more time for the discussion there. So you are all invited and we will try to also respond to your uh, questions and to your points uh, there because we have like two more minutes. So I think we have time for one more comment. Okay. Yes, thank you. Uh, I'm Jacob uh, from uh, Southern Africa, IGF. Mine is just a recommendation that in terms of building awareness, the capacity building, let's engage our education systems in our countries because right now i was looking at my children's curriculum they're in primary education 10 years 12 years they're already learning about the sdgs climate change issues but igf is not being taught so i think one of the things we can take back home to our countries let's engage our countries you know education systems let them teach igf issues thank you Ah, yes, we will share the link for the future session in the chat. And Shena has a final comment, please, Shena. 
Oh. Yeah, I just want to add quickly about the, the workshop that is happening this afternoon. Uh, workshop 341, uh, I believe we are also going to focus a little bit on what we can do next year in Japan for our youth summit and everything. So with some, some focus of like a short term goal that we all can achieve together, per perhaps it's also an opportunity um, to, to coordinate a little bit and see what we can do at local level and regional level in order to uh, prepare for next year or two. So do, you know, ho really hope to see all of you um, later this afternoon. Thank you so much, all. Uh, we will do a, an applause right now. <laughs> <laughs>